a lot of money very quickly. When in the old days, if I was, uh, you know, uh, ice or vanilla ice or somebody, and I made a DVD of music, I could sell it through Tower Records or any of the record stores, and I was scaling because I was selling one to many. That model's gone. The iPod came along and blew all that away because now music is, can be downloaded from anywhere, and distribution became the scalable component. Okay. If you give me a choice between investing in something that was created new and something that is a distribution model that can distribute not just one product but many, my risk is lower at the distribution level versus at the manufacturing level. So scalability is everything. You have to constantly be thinking, do I have a product that can become global? And if it can, what are the distribution models and how fast can I get through those? This is where you have to really need help. Usually, this is something where most entrepreneurs fail in understanding because unless you have a distribution background, you probably don't know what I'm talking about here. Okay? You'll probably get the idea that you need to scale, but get some help in this area. Okay, from day one, you have to be thinking about marketing. Everyone in the old model was I create it. I get some distribution, maybe some partnerships, and then later on, maybe after I get funding, I bring in a marketing person. The marketing person should be there from day one. Today's websites have to be built with marketing components built in the center. If you don't have marketing in the middle of your website, if you don't have the ability to have hooks for AdWords and Google Words and everything else, then it's not going to work. If you just post a document on the web, you will lose competitively. Strategic partners. I don't know if you know what that means, but my definition of a strategic partner is a company that's much larger than yours, that likes what you have, and is partnering with you to push you through their distribution channels. But more importantly, they are so concerned about you going out of business that they will help you. Because you are, even though you're very small, you help their business tremendously. Okay. So a strategic partner can also invest in you. They can give you marketing money so that you can market right along with them. And when they give you marketing money, they're not taking an ownership in your company, so they're not diluting you. They're not making your position in your company smaller. This is extremely important for a venture capitalist because the more strategic partners you have or I bring you, the more revenue or turnover you can get to faster, the more distribution and less money we have to give you. Therefore, we're not diluted and you're not diluted. In our models, we only make one investment. Okay? In the old models, you would get money from angels, then you would get money from a venture capitalist, then you'd get another money transferred from another venture capitalist, and then maybe you'd sell. You know what your ownership is going to be after all that? So small, it's not even worth it. Okay? Today's models for us is one investment. Then leverage yourself through strategic partners to minimize the second rounds of financing so that you can actually make something of your business when you sell it. In Southern California, I mentioned we invested in Broadcom. Broadcom has six billionaires. One of them owns the Mighty Ducks <coughs> who went to the Stanley Cup. I can tell you, they're all friends of mine. But they, they will stand here in front of you and say, if we hadn't listened to this, we would be just 100 millionaires, not billionaires. The difference was a huge amount of money that was made on the back end. If you're not in this business as an entrepreneur to make money and sell your business someday, then the VCs have nothing to do with you. Remember that my business is a business of finding the next great thing and capitalizing on it. That's where the word venture capital comes from. The capitalizing on it and meaning that we want to sell the business. In our business model in the old days, we used to have 10-year funds and our companies would sell roughly five to seven years into those 10-year funds. Innovator Capital is a five-year fund with exits at three years. What have we done? We've done exactly what I'm telling you to do. The world has accelerated. We've accelerated our financial models as well to not only invest faster, that's why we don't read business plans, and also to be able to get out faster, not just us, but you. Hopefully, all of us can have successful relationships together. Okay. Sustainability. It's a word you're hearing all over the world today. Sustainability goes to you know green technology, 
sustainability goes to your sustainability. I know we have a life coach in here, and he was talking about what is it to be whole as a human, to sustain yourself as a full human, not just an entrepreneur working like crazy, but a family person, you know, that understands what it's like to be, a, you know, a, a person. I didn't tell you my first job ever. I was a psychologist. I was a, a practicing psychologist in private practice before I even became a, 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 a an entrepreneur and sold my business. And uh, believe me, that's why we interview. Yeah, right now, we, we, create, we have a term sheet out with a company in Lund. No, yeah, Lund. And we actually met their families. Before we issued the term sheet, we met children, we met wives, we met everyone. I want to know everybody in the family. I can't compete with a wife that is saying, no, don't take that money, or no, they're trying to rip you off, or whatever. I invest in entrepreneurs, and that many times means their family. So sustainability is one of the most important things for you as an individual. Why are you doing this? Why are you making this happen? But sustainability is about your business, okay? If you can't survive, then you will not be around. It just can't survive. So my last slide is a, a slide of a mudfish. Do you know what a mudfish is? Well, that's what it looks like, okay? And that's what it's called, but that's the true definition. A mudfish is in Australia, and it burrows in the sandy river bottoms, surviving on little or no water, waiting for the rains to return. And your business, aside from everything else I told you, has to be able to be sustainable. You have to make money. Profitability in year one is mandatory for our investments. The first year, okay, profitability. And that's the, the P word, profitability, is something that has gotten lost in all the Silicon Valley investments that have made. Here, let's give you $20 million. In three years, we'll sell you. Well, uh, how much profit are we going to make? Ah, don't worry about it. The revenues are going to be high. The turnover will be great. We'll do really well. Now, in today's market in particular, you probably still have a little bit of time left in the trough before it catches up from California. But, you know, the sustainability of a mud fish is key. So that you, when the rains come back, you guys will proliferate. You'll do very well. Okay? That was it. Any questions on this? Are you on me? We're available. I think we're going to be here for a little while, too, right? Okay, thank you. I know, too much to think about, I know. <laughs> uh, I have one question. Yeah. Uh, all of us here are doing a course in the entire course is writing a business plan. Yeah. And you said that you no longer read business plans. <laughs> what would you suggest that we... Well, first of all, the, the idea of understanding how to write a business plan, I think, is fantastic. For you as a first-time entrepreneur, if that's what you are, to understand the processes of what a business is all about and be able to do financials and all that. But when you start your business, the minute you start, that business plan is no longer correct because it's lost anything. And if you're spending time doing your business plan while you're doing your business, in my opinion, your business will fail. When you run your business, run your business. Okay? Uh, and that means you know, your business plan at that point is maybe an idea and you'll go back to it from time to time and say, okay, that's interesting, but geez, we went this way. Re remember that I'm really an entrepreneur, a serial entrepreneur that's been fairly successful. And one of the things I've learned is that when I start to do something here, almost all of my businesses, that didn't sell. What sold was something over here. And if I'm not good enough to think about it, this is where scientists get in involved in problems because they go, I'm making this kind of machine. And they forget that they're stumbling over customers that want to buy this machine. And instead of making this machine and creating uh, or you know, taking the supply and the demand that's there, they don't do that. And they stay focused. So business plans. Now, how do we get around it? We have this nasty form. Okay? You fill out the form and we see you. Okay? The form is all online. You can go to innovatorcapital.com. And, um, and then you can uh, uh, pull it down. We're seeing some companies here that filled out the form since last time we were here. And we immediately know whether or not it's something, it, whether or not we're going to waste your time, we're going to waste our time in meeting. It's very important. Uh, one last thing before I forget. I want, yeah. Yeah, go ahead. <clears throat> it's also a business plan. I think it's, it's really good for you to really, it's a good exercise when you're going to start a company to do that. But as a tool for us as venture capitalists to invest in you based on your business plan. That is not what that's for. So, so 
uh, it still is a valuable tool for you to go through that whole process. You really understand your market and everything, but as a